just be helpful. And if somebody doesn't want your help, you know, then back away and go find somebody who does, right? Welcome to Professional Builders Secrets, the podcast for building company owners wanting to grow safely and securely. I'm your host, Will Blunt, and today I'm joined by one of the executive coaches at APB, Clint Best. Clint, welcome to the show. Hey, Will. Happy to be here. Good to see you. I'm really excited to have you on. It's been a long time coming since we've I've been taken over the podcast and you're doing so much great work with the builders over there in North America that really excited to hear some insights today. You know, it's uh, it's a great topic that we have today. Um, I'm learning all the time. I'm uh, I'll, I'll admit, right? It's it's life is like sales, especially is like peeling an onion, right? You just keep finding new layers, um, and you're you take in what you're ready for. So uh, happy to share what I've gathered up so far. Yeah. Well, the topic is closing the sale today, but sales seems to be a pressing issue at the moment. Would you agree? Well, always. Right. I mean, mm. it's, it's, uh, I, we're all selling something. I joke around you know, <laughs> with, with my clients about that. We're all selling something, whether it's an idea or a concept or a, uh, a product or a service. And, um, and, you know, and people, uh, you know, have the same psychology we've had for years and years and years. So certain things work, certain things don't. It's not about being manipulative uh, at all. It's really about being helpful. So what challenges do you see that builders face when it comes to closing the sale? Well, there are a number that come to mind. Um, I mean, one of the challenges that um, that most builders and most businesses, frankly, have is they just don't have enough opportunities. They don't have enough leads and the leads that they do have or the opportunities they do have are easily squandered, right? If you, if you aren't prepared, uh, if you don't have some kind of um, process or system in place, and and so I think that's that's the other the next thing would be not having a sales systems or or a process, and and every industry has its own steps process with steps in it um, that works. You know there are simple transactional sales in retail. There are more complex sales when you're selling a high ticket item. Now, we happen to be in an industry where that is the case, right? You're selling a very high ticket item. And so when that is the case, it's important to build a relationship, right? It's important to have a process that breaks things down in steps and takes it easy, right? It's like um, going on, you know, going on a date, right? You first, you gotta, <laughs> you gotta go through the, the motions, right? You don't just jump uh, right to the uh, to the end. So, yeah, sales process is is important with logical steps, um, and I think another another very very common issue that I deal with all the time is just the confidence you know, that people have, and, you know, they're, we're dealing with builders and builders aren't naturally trained salespeople, right? Thank goodness. <laughs> <It's really laughs> um, and they just have the natural fears that come along with, um, with the kind of flawed belief systems around selling. And typically because we've all experienced some bad sales people in our lives and some bad sales systems. And so, uh, yeah, asking for the sale, fear of rejection, uh, that sort of thing. Um, yeah, those are, those are some of the common, the common challenges that they have. And, 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 and I would add to that, that, you know, without a good system, without that kind of confidence that I'm talking about, um, you end up chasing people around, right? And that can be really, um, really, uh, you know, suck a lot of time and energy out of you. Absolutely. I, I've, I've been there before uh, running my own business in the past, Clint, and it's really disheartening when you, f you get into that hamster wheel of just feeling like you're chasing rather than them coming to you, right? Well, absolutely. In fact, I, I think it, it summons up performance issues, right? And we start and end up trying to perform. And we're just, you know, really what you're trying to do, the mindset needs to be one of being helpful. Just be helpful. And if somebody doesn't want your help, you know, then back away and go find somebody who does, right? Yeah, that's a fair point. That's a fair point. So they're struggling with not having a sales process in place. Are there any other mistakes that you see that are common for builders to make when it comes to sales? Um, common mistakes. Yeah. I mean, I mean, uh, we talked about chasing, I think, um, 
rushing, I think, is a, is a common mistake, trying to get to the sale too, too quickly. Um, I was talking to a couple of clients of mine uh, today about that. I mean, you know, we have a, um, as, as you know, as most of our listeners know, we promote fixed price contracts. And uh, the, uh, the unique thing about a fixed price contract is that you have to do the pre-construction in advance of signing the contract. Right. And then there's lots of um, uh, benefits that go along with that and challenges as well, which I won't get into because it has to do with that whole sales process. But but uh, really just uh, having the pay, like having the patience to work through all of the decisions that need to be made um, before you get to that uh, that that point where you're consummating the, the, the contract and the relationship that you can build up as you go through that really earning the right all the way along to ask for the sale, uh, you know, at the end. The other mistake I think that they make is they don't anticipate the kinds of objections they might get, right? And the kinds of things that might get in the way of of the sale. And so and so they don't head those things off early enough, right? They don't, um, you know, bring them up, talk about them, clear the air, um, mm. get clarity. And, and that can be problematic as well. Does that make sense? It does. And I guess the way you say that though, it makes it sound, sound like a, a talent or a skill that I need to be able to ask those type of questions or know the questions to ask. But is it is it simpler than that? Well, it is a skill, right? And some people are born with natural talent, but uh, we know that effort trumps talent, right? Uh, that was made clear in uh, Carol Dweck's book, uh, Mindset, and, uh, and another book, and I can't remember the author, but called Grit, I think. Where, um, you know, you look, you know, being in business takes work and um, <clears throat> and everything you do in your business is a system. Your business is just an end to end series of systems that one leads to the next. One of them happens to be your sales system, your sales process. Another subsystem of that greater system is your closing you know, process. So yeah, there are scripts that need to be um, internalized, I would say. Right, internalized as opposed to necessarily memorized, <laughs> right? Because I don't know of anyone that's comfortable reading a sales script. Do you? <laughs> no, I guess unless it's second nature and you've read it a hundred times. But <laughs> right, right, and and one of the old sayings that we have in the coaching business is whenever you do something for the first time, you're generally not very good at it. <laughs> So if it's worth doing uh, once, it's worth doing, you know, a hundred times to, to get it right. And I think when you internalize a script and you, um, you sort of bring it alongside your own natural personality and you get comfortable with it and you understand why you're asking these questions and why you're pausing for a moment and why you're, you know, then it's less technique and more and more natural. And that's really what it needs to become. So, but you gotta, you gotta get there, right? So that means you gotta practice. And uh, I remember when I got into sales, I stood in front of a mirror and practiced the script and it felt horrible for a while. Yeah. Oh, it's the worst. It's like hearing yourself on video uh, <laughs> the first time at least. <laughs> Right, right. Just like a little uh, piece out of a movie, kind of a comedy movie where you're working through that. But listen, you know, you got to sometimes you just got to fake it till you make it. I'm not sure I love that old saying, but there's a lot of truth to it. What advice would you give a builder who, yeah, was almost uncomfortable with the sales process? Uh, practice, you know, would be one. And we, we've talked about that. But, um, you know, connect with your purpose. I would say would be a huge um, element in that. You don't remember why you're doing it. It's not about the money. It can never be about the money, right? Um, and this is another you know problematic thing, right? When we when our when our pipeline goes dry um, and our opportunities become sparse, and we end up we we're chasing you know people um, and and not not being available to the people who who really want us and lead us, then our you know, we, we end up getting desperate and that can be, mm. uh, there can be serious implications to that. The, the largest of which is we, we, we 
lower our price. We buy a job, right? And nobody wants to do that. So put the work in early um, and you'll get the benefit. I'm sure we've all been there before when you feel like you just need to get that next job across the line. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I love that old saying, right? It's what you say to, to yourself about yourself while you're by yourself that counts. And if you're telling yourself that you need that sale, um, you're going to start feeling needy. And uh, better to be proactive, you know, because that, you know, putting in the work, reading the books, practicing, um, and uh, and 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 upskilling, you know, yourself is going to create confidence, and that confidence transfers transfers big time um, in sales. It sounds like you're talking about mindset there as well. The internal dialogue you've got um, while you're by yourself is coming out during those meetings. Oh yeah. Yeah, sometimes right in the middle of those meetings, right? <laughs> you know, <Well> done. <laughs> that's another reason why you want to have uh, your systems are so important because what happens when you have a system, when you don't have to think about what you're going to say next or the series uh, that you're going to say it or the sequence that you're going to say it, it frees up a tremendous amount of, um, of um, bandwidth, right? And what do you do with that bandwidth? You're paying attention, you're listening, you're watching for body language, you're watching for buying signals, right? And if you know what those things are that you should be watching for, um, everything, the whole process gets goes more smoothly and people get that feeling, you know, that they know you, like you and trust you and right. And that's just going to lead to um, a more likely successful outcome. You mentioned slashing prices, which is the last thing we want people to be doing out there, builders to be doing out there. Are there any other implications on the business, on the individual that come from leads drying up, not having a sales process in place and just feeling uncomfortable about the whole situation? Well, I think you just mentioned it. They're feeling comfortable about the whole situation, <laughs> right? I mean, you can, uh, um, right? It's, it's hard enough to run a business when you're feeling good and positive about things, but it's even more difficult when, when you're not. And of course, you know, financially, um, if you're, if you're, if, if you don't have, well, you know, obviously it starts with marketing, right? So you, you need a good marketing system, but I found that uh, a lot of people, um, there's, there's opportunities all around them. They're available if they just go out and, you know, uh, reconnect with their, with their uh, network or their, their community or their friends and family. Uh, there's lots of opportunities out there. It's just, you have to come across um, the right way and, and you have to have a way to initiate those opportunities. So um, yeah, I think uh, uh, remind me, uh, I think I've, I've lost track of your question. That's okay. I was just um, trying to understand what are the implications there are for the building company and the building company owner uh, that come from these challenges they're facing in the sales process? Because you mentioned slashing prices. What's the flow on effect of that? Well, the flow on effects of that would be to uh, have tiny margins, as we say, right? And you can't, um, you can't provide a world-class service with tiny margins, right? Or even with, uh, with slim margins. You need to be able to reinvest in your business um, you know, as, as you develop your sales process and, and your ability to close in that sales process, um, and you can generate, um, higher, higher margins. And now I'm not talking about unfair margins, right? I'm talking about fair for both the, um, the builder and the consumer. And that's certainly what we're all about at EPB is creating the conditions for that to happen. But when you, um, so yeah, so, you know, uh, a professional builder, the kind of builders that we work with are always reinvesting um, part of those profits uh, back into the company. So ultimately, you know, the customers benefit um, because, I mean, you can start um, at first, right? It, it might be a little bare bones, but as you go, you can, um, you know, you can start to add a little bit of wow factor right into your sales process and into different um, stages of your, of your sales process. And that, but th that oftentimes costs money. And, you know, I suppose the other implication would be you can never re replace yourself in the sales function. If um, you know, if you, if you um, the better, when you have a documented step-by-step -step logical sales process with a good closing um, uh, element to it, 
uh, you can you can teach somebody else how to do that and uh, and uh, free up time to really run your operation. Yeah, I interviewed Felipe Freg. He's one of your clients, right? Yeah, yeah, I love Felipe. Yeah, that was oh, that was a great episode. <laughs> he was he was an amazing guest. One thing he did speak about was the experience for clients and that how the fixed price that you can build the appropriate margins into it's he he used the example of like buying a tesla or buying a car um the the client wants to know how much they're going to invest and know that there's going to be a great outcome at the end so they they actually are happy to pay pay for that because it's it's fixed and it's set rather than having you know costs increase over time yeah, he, and Felipe is a great example. I mean, when he when he came to us, my, I remember that first conversation we had. It was all about closing the sale. Right? He was <laughs> he um, he was very interested in learning how to do that better. And you know, because he especially because he deals with such a high end clientele. Um, mm. And uh, and you know what? Like just you know, without getting into great detail, just by filling some gaps. Right. There's a perfect example of he just had a couple of gaps, a couple of blind spots that he couldn't necessarily see. And once he saw them, boy, whew, he um, he took it and ran with it. So uh, and the other thing I think that pops up there is, you know, when you talks about you talk about the Tesla example. Right. Um, you know, if you were buying a Tesla, would you care how much the steering wheel costs? Yeah, no, I think he, I think he might have spoken something similar to that in the episode. Yeah, that's a great point. Yeah, it's about people are buying value. They're they're buying a, a solution to a problem, right? And uh, and so if we can provide that solution and articulate it well, um, we're going to um, you know we don't have to sell on price. Let's put it that way. And a good sales system and a good closing um, uh, process can um, can help a lot with that. That's interesting that because. Um, on face value, Felipe comes across as quite a charismatic, you know, engaging person that I would imagine would be good at sales. You know what I mean? Like that natural talent of being able to talk to someone. Yeah. But it's interesting that, the, you know, the process is just as important to that. Well, yeah, absolutely. Right. I mean, uh, uh, everybody, I mean, there's, there's, there are real benefits to nervous energy, as we know, right? From different, different, you know, people who get on stage will tell you that. And, and being in a sales process is is a lot like being on stage. And of course, Felipe is a, a musician, so he's got a good background yeah. in that. Um, but in spite of that, yeah, absolutely. We uh, again, you come back to that mindset, right, Will? Um, mm. We talked about earlier. I mean, you have to have the right mindset. And you have to you have to set that mindset every day, right? You have to you you, you have to have um, rituals and habits in your life and your business that help you to reconnect with that that mindset to to um, um, bring that remind yourself of all the reasons you should be confident in a situation. But um, you know, and, and again, a lot of confidence comes from knowing what questions to ask and when knowing specifically what outcomes you want um, from a um, from a particular stage in your process right always and and that's it that's a big part of you know when you get to the closing it's it should be well orchestrated by then right and you should have you should have sort of uh, uh, laid the groundwork for uh, for a successful close uh, to make it really easy for for your prospect to, uh, or your, your, your prospective client to, uh, to say yes and sign on the line that is dotted as they say. Say yes. I actually went to a presentation last night, uh, to a well-known, um, business coach in Australia who, you know, is, is all about scaling businesses. Yeah. And he he used the tactic throughout his whole presentation of encouraging the audience to say yes, put their hand up. He, he was complete like repetitive, repetitive, repetitive. It was like reinforcing the yes word. Yeah, yeah. It's you know, there's a rhythm to it um, mm. for sure. And again, it's uh, it's affirming, right? It's it's affirming. I mean, I'm sure uh, the person you're speaking about was just you know, using an af a, a technique of affirmation, right? So that, they, you know, to get people to say out loud um, what he was kind of leading them to, <laughs> to, uh, to think or say. Exactly, exactly. Okay, I want to get into the tactics in a moment. But before we do that, what would you say to a builder 
who comes to you and says, my sales are down because the market is bad at the moment? Uh, well, uh, listen, the, the market is the market. It is what it is, right? There's people out there with money. There's people out there ready to spend. Um, it's, a, it, it's a myth for sure. Um, and uh, you're going to have your ups and down, up and down cycles. And, and that's why it's, it's even more important that you're prepared for those things um, because, you know, there will be always be a thinning of the herd that happens when, uh, when we have downturns uh, in the cycle, but I point to them to the benefits, right? Um, and, uh, and, and let's be honest, we've, we've been in an overheated market for so long that we've forgotten what normal is like, you know? And there are serious disadvantages that come with, uh, with, uh, with a hyper hot market, with an overly hot market. Um, and, uh, and I, I think builders are actually in a better position um, to uh, be in a healthy sort of state of control in this sort of an environment, if you're thinking about it right. Yeah, I imagine you can get complacent when things are going well. Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. We all do, right? That's why, we, <laughs> yeah. that's why you need a coach. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You're a booked out though, aren't you, Clint? You don't need any more. <laughs> well, it's taken a little while, but yeah, it's... Uh, <laughs> I feel like I've worked hard for it, but you know what? Also, feel like oh yeah, I got a great kind of uh, group of clients right now. I have a lot of fun working with them. Cool. Okay, so let's talk tactics because everyone out there listening is wanting to hear more about tactics. So, how can builders improve their sales process to close more deals? Well, always be um, always be advancing the sale. You know, I think is you know we you know I don't want to kind of uh, um, regurgitate everything that we talk about in the action plan because I'd rather people go to the action plan and and watch it. It's um, uh, you know that'll be up in October, and uh, certainly our members will have access to that, and uh, and it's going to be a good one. You know, it's uh, sometimes it's it's you know your closing process is woven into your sales process, of course. Um, but uh, always be advancing as opposed to um, a continuance, I think is the language that we use, right? Like a continuance is just kind of like dragging it out, whereas advancing is reaching a certain outcome. Um, so, you know, and I think, uh, you know, establishing those micro commitments along the way, right? Realizing that every step in your in your process, including your close, is a, um, is a, a, uh, an opportunity to uh, to determine the level of commitment that your prospect has or still has, uh, see whether it's growing or waning um, at all. So asking them for that. So so some of the tools that we use is and and you know these are all closing um, opportunities, right? When you close on a concept agreement, for instance, or mm -hmm. uh, or you close on that next appointment, right? Mm -hmm. um, that you're gonna have, or even on that you know discovery call, right? You're, but <clears throat> But ultimately, we're, we're, we're moving towards closing the, the you know, professional contract proposal. Um, but again, you know, just uh, making sure that every part, every step in that process is well scripted, well um, uh, positioned and well executed, uh, making sure that, um, that you're not only getting those commitments, but you're, uh, uh, you're being helpful along the way, right? Helpful and, um, you know, sending people reminders, um, sending them helpful information as they're going through the process. Uh, and, uh, and of course, you know, when the opportunity arises, asking for the sale. I love the idea of micro commitments throughout the process. Like even just a meeting, as you mentioned, it just creates that commitment uh, and brings them along the journey, right? Absolutely. And they, you know, they got to put some skin in the game, whether it's financial or, or, or time or energy or, um, or effort, whatever it is. Um, you know, I like to think of myself as a guide for my clients. I think it would be a fair a metaphor for a builder to think of themselves as a guide for, uh, for one of their customers and um, ultimately can't help them unless they uh, hire you, as, you know, to, to build for them. Yeah. In that, in terms of advancing versus continuation, I was once told um, when I was doing sales training at a very much younger age than I am now, <laughs> uh, that a no is better than a maybe. Is, is that something that resonates with you? Uh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You know, there's that, that old rule of seven, 
seven no's to get to a yes, right? Being, being persistent, but professionally persistent, right? I mean, listen, I think one of the, the problem areas people get to in sales is uh, barking up the wrong tree, right? Like, like trying to sell somebody who's just not interested in, in what you have. So that's, that's why the qualification and discovery process is, is so important to determine fit um, as you're moving, as you're moving through. But um, yeah, I mean, it's feedback, right? It's useful information. <laughs> so somebody once told me, said it's either use, useful information or bad news. You get to decide. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think it also comes back to if you get a maybe, then you, you might just drag it out forever and, and never get a proper response. Yeah, you got to You got to challenge people, right? I mean, listen, uh, we talk about mindset and energy and confidence. If you don't have the confidence to uh, call call people out on a in a professional manner, in an appropriate, you know, tasteful manner, um, using you know proper communication skills and tone and body language, etc., right? Uh, then you you know you probably shouldn't be in in business, right? You you really do need to have the confidence. Like like if you really believe in what you do and in the value of what you do, you shouldn't have any problem, you know. Um, um, going there and, uh, and you shouldn't be afraid to get a no. Right. And if it's, and if, 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 if everything ends there, if the process ends there, well, yeah, you probably just saved yourself a ton of time and energy. <laughs> Move yeah, on. That's true. We could probably talk for a long time about confidence though. Cause I think that's, that's quite a multi-layered topic, <laughs> which isn't just a straight line. Absolutely. Uh, confidence. You know, I'm a, I love to golf. And, um, okay. and I've got a kind of a mentor I golf with. His name is Terry. And he, uh, he reminds me often when we're golfing, he's much better than I am. So <laughs> you know, he's, that's always good. You, yeah, you're better yeah, off to play with better players. You're always going to push yourself. Yeah. And, you know, occasionally he'll say, he'll say, there's nothing more important than confidence when you're dressing the ball. Right. And just focus, make good contact. That's what you want, right? So same thing in uh, when you're closing a sale, right? You just need to, you know, have confidence in what you can deliver and in what you're, um, you know, what you're bringing to the party, and um, and and see yourself as, uh, you know, being a place of assertive assertiveness, I guess, where you've got a high respect for yourself and a high respect for others. Really, that's. That's, uh, you know, that's a really important concept in, 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 in any kind of a relationship. And when you're in a sales process, you're in a relationship, you know, with someone and, um, and you're either playing I'm right, or you're building the relationship. <laughs> Noodle on that one for a while. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm noodling, I'm noodling on the golf metaphor. It's actually, it's, it's like, um, marinating in my mind. <laughs> the thing that I find very interesting about it, it's such a lonely place standing over a golf ball, especially when you're putting, but anytime you're standing over a golf ball, everyone goes quiet. It's just you and the ball. There's thousands of variables about what's about to happen. And the only way you can have confidence, which I don't have over a golf ball, by the way, but the only way you can have confidence is just repetition. Yeah. Yeah. Muscle memory is an amazing, an amazing thing. But uh, alongside that, and I think you touched on it, is just that your ability to sort of focus on the ball, right? Focus on, on the outcome, right? And the contact and, uh, um, and not look up, right? Right. I mean, that's right. You, you know, cause when you're looking up, it's kind of like, um, you, you're, you're putting the cart before the horse, right? And I suppose in, in sales, it's very much like that. Like stay focused on what you're doing right now in the moment. Um, let the swing come to you as we say in golf. <laughs> <laughs> we mentioned earlier about some builders trying to rush the sale and that's probably a great, great representation of that there. Yeah. You got to meet people where you're at, but again, right. You got to be a good guide, right? You, you're, listen, if you want to be looked upon as an authority in a relationship, which you certainly do, all professional builders need to have that authority because when you have that authority, people, you know, they trust you, they trust the guidance that you're giving them. So again, right. If, if you're all over the place, if you're um, at all uncertain of of this step or the next steps, uh, you know that's 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 going to translate to a, 
uh, to start eroding that confidence. Mm. What about objections? There must be a ton of common objections that builders get, which you might have some tactics to help them out with. <laughs> I certainly understand why you would ask me that question, Will. <laughs> <laughs> I'm uh, tongue in cheek. I'm joking a little bit because, uh, yeah, I mean, there's a very uh, time tested, true um, method for handling objections. And it's uh, once you learn it, it seems so um, obvious and self evident that, uh, and, and it's probably been used on you many, many times, right? All of us, uh, because it's just, a, it's just a natural, um, part of problem solving and keep moving people forward. And really that's what we're trying to do in a sales process is we move people forward and towards a, a successful close, but only if, right, um, you can remove those barriers, you know, those obstacles, those, uh, those objection, objections. So, um, you know, we go through the steps in, in the action plan, of course, um, and I can, I can touch on them here if you, if you think that might be helpful. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Even at a high level would be great for the listeners out there that aren't, aren't yet members of APB. Yeah. Like I said, you, you, I mean, listen, the first thing I will say is that if you don't, if you aren't super clear on what your, the, your, um, your customer's typical objections are or will be, then you need to get clear because there's probably only a handful of them. And you have to start removing them early on, but uh, they'll and they'll come up at different uh, different stages in your sales process. But uh, whenever they do, and then again, that's why you need to uh, a system so that you're not so you're available to listen, right, and to uh, not only listen but to to watch for uh, body language and. Um, and in times when people go silent and they start to um, think about things or, or, or you can see they're concerned about something or they have a question on their mind. So we always want to be asking questions. And when we get an objection, uh, the first thing we want to do is, um, is um, empathize, right? Empathize with it. You know, I could certainly understand why that's, what I was joking around with you earlier, right? I could certainly understand why that might be uh, an issue for you, right? <laughs> Um, now, is that the only the only uh, uh, thing that would hold you back, you know, from making a decision today, whether whatever that is? You know, so you want to isolate the objection, right? Because the last thing you want to do is solve one and then have another one pop up. Right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let's get them all out on the table and, uh, <laughs> and deal with them right now, so that uh, we, when you circle back um, to close again, you're not you're not you know, frustrating the situation. So once you've isolated that, that objection or the objections, uh, you answer them, right? You simply answer them. So you draw on your experience um, and, uh, and, and um, make your best effort at putting their mind at ease. And that might involve drilling down, you know, going a little deeper into the questions and, and uh, to explore, you know, where that's coming from. Often at times it's an emotional um, issue. Uh, then, uh, you know, can confirm your answer and, uh, and then ask for the next, the next action. So, uh, you know, we, we all know some of the common objections, you know, I need to think about it. Um, you know, uh, I'm going to wait for the prices to come down, that sort of thing. Right. We've heard them all. I'm sure every builder listening to this has heard them all. Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> and when are the prices going to come down? <laughs> yeah. <Never. laughs> Uh, very good. Thanks, Clint. That's been some great tips there on handling objections. And there's a ton more, as you mentioned, in the uh, the action plan when it comes out. Yeah. In terms of um, long-term closing and just being great at doing this over the long term for builders, do you have any advice? Uh, long-term advice. Um, yeah. I mean, uh, stay sharp, right? Stay sharp. Always be, you know, practicing. Um, always be you know, improving your, your system, right? I mean, we, we often talk in, in APB about, you know, first you got to implement, then you got to optimize, right? It's never going to be, uh, oftentimes when I'm working with, um, with a building client, we just need to put something in place that, that we'll do for now. And then we're going to come back and work on it. So the, the, uh, just accepting the fact that you're going to get better if you keep working on it and, um, and certainly your sales system is um, your sales process and especially 
your your ability to close uh, will be an important part of that. Uh, track your success, right? Test and measure, track. Uh, there are, uh, you know, you have, there's, there's the, most builders that I work with are familiar with the term sales funnel, right? You've got a sales funnel and, 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 you know, all those steps that we talked about, whether they be in, in, in the early stages or the latest stages, um, you want to pay attention to people are getting hung up or bottlenecked, uh, you know, in there. Uh, so, uh, and you want to try, you know, uh, test and measure, measure different, different questions that you use or, um, different ways that you set up the room for that first meeting or uh, or different closing questions that you that you might have right that uh, um, that you want to use when the time is right you mentioned staying sharp and I guess that relates to learning and just always being um, you know inquisitive and, and finding out more about your sales process and how you do things what are some habits that builders can put in place and how commonly do they need to be you know, refining these things? Uh, habits. I mean, asking questions, is it, would you consider that to be a habit? I guess so. I and mean, if you're doing a lot of sales meetings, that is that is something you'd be doing regularly. I, I guess I was more getting at what's something they can put in their calendar once a week, once a month, when it, once a quarter, where, whenever it is to make sure that they're deliberately learning, deliberately refining their processes. Ah, okay. Yeah. Well, no, absolutely. So there you should, there's, there's lots of good... Uh, thought leaders out there, right? I mean, our APB podcasts are are, are amazing resources. So uh, building in those uh, that learning time, uh, listening to yeah, reading books, right? Uh, I, there was a book by Jeffrey Gittimer called The Sales Bible that uh, it was given to me. Uh, I don't know, probably twenty years ago, if I'm if I'm right. And it's got it's got you know, it's highlighted to death. All the pages are <laughs> cranked and right there are markers in place and and whatnot. And I, because you got to keep coming back to things and, and remind yourself. I mean, another another really important part is is exercise and diet. I mean, people okay. underestimate how important it is to feel energetic, um, especially you know when you're um, when your sales activity is high. Uh, to just feel good and energetic, that's important. So I would say. I would say those things, but definitely always, um, uh, you know, dripping content, I guess you could say, uh, on yourself and you, lots of YouTube videos. I mean, there's so many good good resources out there. Just carving out some space basically to make sure that you're, you're learning new things and, and refining what you do know. Yeah. And use it, right? Use it. Um, practice it. You know, I'm not a big fan of reading. You know, I've, I've said this many times, I think, uh, perhaps on another podcast of reading. Um, I'm not impressed by somebody who reads a book every week. I, I'm impressed by somebody who reads, you know, maybe a book every month and then actually uses it, you know, yeah. and makes it part of their system. So uh, absolutely. Well, I don't think you fully know, understand something until you execute on it. Oh, absolutely. The learning comes in the, in the doing. And then again, even more in the teaching, right? So if you're teaching your, your, I mean, everybody in your organization should be selling, right? Everybody in your organization should should understand from their perspective how to advance the sale, right? And how they contribute to that. Um, and so, again, if you're not teaching your your team those things and encouraging them to do the same thing, then you're you've got lots of opportunity in front of you. Very good. Some great advice there, Clint. For any members out there of APB, closing the sale action plan comes out in October, and that's one that Clint will be going into great detail on all of the different things about closing the sale. Some of the things we discussed today, but um, there's tons more value in there. So we'll include a link to that in the show notes. Another place to start for non-members is the sales blueprint for builders. That's a free downloadable resource that we can also share in the show notes. And that's a great place to kind of kickstart your sales process. But Clint, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on the show today. Any final advice for builders out there about closing the sale? Uh, Will, thank you so much. It's It's been a pleasure. Uh, we could go on all day, um, you know. But I would say I would leave them with this, right? Don't force sales, right? Be prepared to walk away. Um, keep in touch. That should be part of your system. Uh, you know, we've got this little technique called uh, uh, the three by three, right? Which, uh, and I use it all the time. This is amazing. And I think that, so, it, you know, three attempts, three channels, three days. And uh, uh, how many times have you called somebody 
I don't know how many times I've called somebody and then called them back a, a, a few seconds later and actually got them. <laughs> There's a little hot tip for you. So uh, um, uh, build those things into your system regularly. Yeah, it's, it's amazing how many times that third attempt, whether it's an email or a phone call or something, actually just gets their attention. And, and you might have been thinking they don't want to speak to me, but they were just busy. And then all of a sudden, it's, a, it's an opportunity again. Absolutely. And and remember, man, you, you builders out there, you guys do great work, amazing work. You offer great value in the world. So be loud and proud about it. Great advice. Thanks, Clint. So also a big thank you to our listeners out there, wherever you are in the world. If you like the show, please subscribe to Professional Builders Secrets on your platform of choice. Uh, and if you're feeling generous, leave us a review. But until next time, have a great day. 